I was told that um, like be like a horse with blinders on, run your race. Mm. If you're looking at everybody else run, you're gonna lose. Like uh, you're not gonna be able to focus on your own race. So, you know, I just I just run my own race, and I also you have to be creative. That just goes. That's just what it is. Like uh, I just when I first started, I thought being an artist was just being creative, not working, not focus on business. But it's a business. Like um, it's marketing. You have to be unique. So if you really just be genuinely yourself. You're naturally gonna stand out because a lot of people in the business I notice that they're actually afraid to be themselves. But if you're yourself, no one can be you more than right. you. T Seals in the house, man. How you, how are you? I'm doing all right. What's up, Josh? Man, dude, this is a <laughs> this is kind of like bittersweet for me because you are literally moving to LA. I just I feel like I have to start by just letting people know that like. We've done a lot of work together, like yeah. a lot of songs. Yeah. Hours. And uh, man, I feel like I've grown through that process. I feel like you've grown through that process. And so, A, I'm just like super excited for you because I know like moving to LA is like potentially the next step of, of your journey. You yeah. know what I mean? But I just want to say I'm super proud of you and like I'm excited to have you as not only like a client, but like also a friend. So, dude, thank you for being here and, um, Man, how you been lately? I've been great. And um, like you said, I, I really appreciate it. Like, we did all this type of work together. And uh, we made quality stuff. We made quality stuff. But um, I'm doing great today. Uh, just getting a lot of stuff ready because that's around the corner. It's a huge move. Yeah. But uh, I'm pretty excited. And uh, I feel like it's like the start of another chapter. You're moving to L.A. You're also... Um, an aspiring videographer so you're moving to LA to do school out there um, but up to this point man like when did it start for you like musically like when were you inspired as a young man like when did music first hit you like that really for as long as I can remember I love music like that's kind of a cliche thing to say because everyone loves music yeah, yeah, yeah but it's like it hit me um, I would say around like early middle school like, uh, I would always ride in the car. Of course, it always starts riding the car with your parents. Mm -hmm. My parents, they were born in the 60s. What are they listening to back then? My mom, she uh, she listened to, it could range from uh, Usher, Confessions, all the way back to uh, Gladys Knight and the Pips. Mm. And uh, Mariah Carey, Alicia Keys, it's insane. And my mom, she, she, she only jammed R&B, gospel, and... Um, she made an exception. She jammed some Prince and Michael Jackson in his little pop. But uh, mainly that, like 90s, 80s R&B. Uh, my dad, he was the one that was really into to rap. Okay, okay. She, she didn't really like all that cursing, but he, <laughs> he would sneak. He would sneak and play it like when it was just me and him riding the car. Yeah, yeah, He'd throw yeah. on some Tupac. <laughs> Tupac. <laughs> we jam out. So it was Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg, you name it. Like stuff from the 90s. And uh, he's a real Houston head. So Scarface, Ghetto Boys. Uh, Pepsi. You, so you grew up in the area, the Houston area. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. very proud Houstonian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't change that when you go to LA. You have to still rep the Houston. Oh, you know what I mean? always, always. So you know, I'm proud of where I came from. So yeah. You first were inspired by all this like early '90s hip hop and stuff, but like, when did you get to the point where you're like, where you were thinking maybe I can write, like maybe I could make songs, like maybe I could perform. Like, where did the writing part of it start? All right, so I've been writing, like, ever since I was a kid. Like you said, I want to be a videographer. I also yeah. want to be a filmmaker. Ever since I was a kid, I've been writing stories and poems. But uh, when I was 16, I really wanted to, like, rap. I really wanted to do it. I was a little, little nervous. But it, it hit me when I was in college. I was like, look, yeah, I just got to do this. I got to go for it. So I just started chasing everything I always wanted. And... I've been happy ever since. You have a poetry background too, right? Mm -hmm. Like, did you write, you were doing, was it spoken word or was it like poetry, poetry where you're just writing and like, tell, tell me that side of things. It started as just poetry, writing in a book, but then um, I was drawn to the stage. So I actually started performing like spoken word in college. Mm. And people don't know this, but 
to me in my book, my philosophy, rap stands for rhythm and poetry. Okay. So it was, it was a bit of an easy transition. I was like, all right, I'm writing these poems, and they turn to rhymes. I was even in a poetry class that was like, this has like a little rhythm to it mm. when they were reading it. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, you know, I've been like ducking it for a minute. Let me just go ahead, go full out rapper on this mug. Have you had a long, uh, long standing love affair with Fruit Loop? Yes. <laughs> yes. It's my. Uh... We have to mention your snack of choice. <laughs> It was like my favorite cereal, like of my childhood. Like, I was just, I'm so shocked that you brought these cereal bars. Yeah, bro. I love the cereal. We're going to get a close up on these cereal bars later. But when I'm on the go, like, uh, it's perfect. It's, it's like perfect just to grab. I got to try one. AJ, are you in on the Fruit Loop yes. cereal bar? Absolutely. It's, it's delicious. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, when I'm on the go and um, I don't have time, I just like, just grab one. Ooh. Yeah. I would think that they would be a little bit tougher, but they're soft. You know what I mean? Like They're soft. That's fire. All the other cereal bars, they like hurt your teeth or whatever, but it melts in your mouth. I told my wife last night, I said, Troy's snack of choice is Fruit Loop cereal bars. She was like, man, that sounds delicious. <laughs> it's really <laughs> good. <laughs> oh, we didn't even know that, that existed. This might be a new thing. I um I actually discovered them like, a month ago, and ever since then, I'm like, I'm obsessed. Bro, think about this from a business perspective. You go play a show, you got your merch table, you have a bar, you have a bowl full of Fruit Loop cereal bars. Oh my gosh. Dude, it's, it's genius. Five, buck, five bucks a piece. <laughs> I'm about to start doing <laughs> it. <laughs> that's what I imagine, though, and that's what's fun about this is like finding out what people's snack is and then just. It's just a fun little fact that people don't know about you. I want to get into the songwriting process, man, because what people don't know about you is like you are you are diligent, man. Like I when I you know, we we've talked before about rappers like Russ and people like that that are just constantly putting out music and yeah. and and for and I heard even one time like Travis Scott, like they recorded like 80 songs or something like that. That's amazing. Something like that. that. And I'm just like, man, you're that type of guy, like, and not and to be that kind of guy, you have to be so diligent at writing, 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 writing. Because not everything you write probably is good enough to make a song out of. But man, you have been really diligent when it comes to like writing and creating songs. Now, what people don't know is you've been hoarding all those songs to yourself. I've got so many songs, like <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how many you have, bro. But it's like insane. Notebooks filled with songs. And I want to get into your process because um, I think this will be helpful for other people. But rap is such a combination of the writing, yeah, the music side of things, and then the performance side of things. And when you you know put all that together, uh, it can be really cool. So when it comes to the your process, first I want to ask you like, why do you write music? Oh man, it's um, so many different reasons. Um, of course, it's for my own personal enjoyment, but also um, my whole life I always felt like I had so much to express. It's like so much like inside. And you can't, it's a lot of stuff that you can't really just sit down, have a conversation with a complete stranger about. Um, so I feel like music is like a vehicle. It's like you could put like your true self in this vehicle. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the stuff that you can't express, when you put it into like an art form, mm -hmm. people connect with it on a different level. And they're like, ah, oh, like I've been through that too. Or like I'm going through that now. And it actually like, um, it can actually help them through the situation. Yeah. They can actually find entertainment in it. Uh, sometimes people just want to dance or something like that. So it's like a variety of different reasons, but... Yeah, I find like a lot of enjoyment out of it. I love expressing myself, and it's like therapy all at the same time. So it's like a triple threat. It's like yeah. I love it. How often are you writing material and um, song ideas? I write at least a verse a day. Like um, I find a beat. Um, I love this website called Beat Stars. Yeah, I'm name dropping. I love the there website called Beat Stars. And um, I find a beat that really connects with me. 
How do you search for beats? Do you search by type beats or you have like certain producers that you follow or? There's a couple of producers that I follow and um, I also do type beats. I find like um, stuff that aligns with my style mm -hmm. and stuff that I connect with automatically, mm -hmm. naturally. And then um, whatever I'm feeling with the beat, I start writing. And it's funny, the stuff that comes out, it's like you're my subconscious writing the songs. It's like I'm not even mm -hmm. uh, really thinking about it. It just comes out. I'm like, wow, that's what it's about. Yeah. With your music, it's, you know, even the song that we'll perform today, like lyrically, it can just be, and it can kind of like go in a lot of different directions. You know what yeah. I mean? And that's part of what I enjoy about, because it feels so creative to me. Like some of the stuff we do, we just will die laughing in the studio because it's like, <laughs> I don't know how you come up with this stuff. You know, it's it feels so fresh and so like, it's like a play on words. And at times you're like talking about things that are just like, I don't know. It's just, it feels so, I enjoy it a lot. And that's yeah. what I like about hip hop in that way is that it can be lyrically kind of um, creative in a way. But like, so when you catch a ride, when you catch a flow or something, does it just like... And you, are you just writing it out to wherever it goes or can it go in like, like where does the inspiration for the writing part come from? Because you know how, you know how it is. It's like, yeah. you could be talking about like valet crashed my car. And then like, I'm like, where did that come from? And then you leave, and then it goes to here and it's just, there's so many interesting things, but like, where does that inspiration come from? It, it really just depends. It's like everyday life, just me living my life. Uh, it could be something I saw something I'm thinking about. And sometimes I'm just like, hey, uh, what if this happened? Or I, um, growing up, I'm a huge hip hop head, huge fan. And I had a couple of like ideas for songs like, man, it'd be so cool if somebody said this in a song, mm -hmm. but there's nobody saying it in a song. So I'm like, let me go ahead and say it. And I'm like, and I start writing and um, it's like, I kind of play off. I just kind of catch a rhythm. I'm like, um, I start thinking about Jerry Springer yeah. <laughs> Start thinking about Jerry Springer. Oh I'm gosh. like, man, like... Uh, you are the father. I'm the father, you know? There's <laughs> <laughs> a couple of things, like, y'all need to listen to that song. Dude, but no yeah. Doubt. What's awesome about, like... <laughs> okay, I will say this, man. Like, you are a good hang in the studio. That's what I really enjoy. Part yeah. of what I really enjoy. I, I enjoy your music, too. But, like, obviously, I enjoy your music. But Appreciate when people that. are a good hang in the studio, man, it's like... It makes this. I'm like, man, is this even a job for me? Like, this is just, just so, having fun. Yeah. yeah, man. So I appreciate the good times. But you, so you said uh, you're a big hip hop head. But like, what what kind of current stuff is inspiring you? Like, any rappers out there? People that you are just like, man. Like, I'm getting a lot of, you know, inspiration from this rapper or whatever. Oh man, um, I'm inspired by so much. Uh, it's funny. Sometimes I find like old stuff, and I'm just like super inspired. Um, right now, um, I'm kind of like on a rock binge. Um, really into Jimi Hendrix, and I I discovered Queen for myself. Really recently. Recent. Well, like a few months back, Man. I saw Bohemian Rhapsody, and I yeah. was like, "This is the shit." Yeah, I, was just, <laughs> I started jamming that. But uh, as far as like rap goes. I would say uh, Future, like, I can't stop listening to yeah. Future. I don't know why. I just can't stop listening. Uh, Future, Don Tolliver, he's doing some really creative stuff. Um, I'm excited for his new project. Uh, Kanye and Drake, I've been, been on them, been jamming them. And um, there's somebody else, somebody else that I'm really, of course, Travis Scott. So yeah. I feel like I'm leaving out a couple of names, but. I'm inspired all right. Over. When you go on tour with them in a little bit, you know, you yeah, yeah, it's all good. Uh, <clears throat> we know it's awesome that you, you mentioned the rock thing because um, AJ will pr probably really like this. But we recorded your voice, and um, you you have a line about Jimi Hendrix in a song or something yes. like that. Yes, and then you did an ad lib part where you did your voice, and then you were like, "Hey, can we make that a guitar sound?" <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I think so. And so we just put a bunch of crazy distortion on it. Yeah. And it just sounds like Jimmy's just like, wow, just like bending the chord. Yes. <clears throat> but it's your voice, man. Like, <laughs> the, it's the so voice, cool. the, the vocal chords, the voice is an instrument too. You know, like uh, growing up, I always wanted to play instruments. I didn't have access to instruments. Mm -hmm. So it's like me using my voice as an instrument. It's like, it's dope to me. So. Yeah. 
I thought that's cool. Uh, we started, man, when did we start working together? Was it two years ago now? It was two years ago. Yeah, because we had a project that we first did, maybe five or six songs. Yeah. Um, and then since then, we worked on so much material. But, like, you, um, I think it's taken you a while to find your sound. Not only on your, because when, when it comes to also rap production, you know, we started doing, like, a lot of left-right stuff, a lot of, like, specific moments in the song where it's like you can kind of get away from the natural cadence and kind of do something different and make it a moment and that kind of stuff i think makes your songs like really unique and stuff um but um it's taken a while to find i think your sound but when it comes to music and stuff and maybe you can kind of talk about like things that you find inspiring on beat stars but like what attracts you to certain music you know what i mean yeah. um what what about the production are you looking for when it comes to because also as a beat maker i'm also wondering that too like what what do people enjoy out there about a certain song and that gets licensed and used whereas other songs don't you know what i mean so what attracts you to the music side of things when you hear a beat oh man uh for me when i found my specific sound um i look for stuff that has energy like different types of energy uh like what it really depends how I feel at the moment, mm. like uh, what energy I, I got with me, and uh, I can like convey it like uh, through my words. But um, I found myself mainly doing atmospheric stuff, like uh, stuff with a nice vibe. Um, I really love 808s, like I like 808s mm -hmm. and uh, snares. It's like um, once once we get into that, I feel like I could really like let loose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do yeah, my yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask you about your strategy for music release too, because we've talked a lot about release strategy and stuff, and you are currently sitting on like three hundred songs, but <laughs> not quite. <laughs> no, <it's good. laughs> but uh, okay, so what is your strategy and move? You know, what are you leading up to? Um, yeah, I think you're decided to release a project together with some songs, but what is how, how have you been thinking about releasing stuff and and what's your plan there? I've studied a lot of people when it comes to rollouts. Like uh, you mentioned before, I really like Russ. Mm -hmm. I really like how he, he does his thing. And uh, I, I admire J. Cole and uh, Kanye West as well. Like when it comes to um, not necessarily like theatrics, when it comes to the mystery behind it, as well as uh, getting like people interested in the... Uh, the project, the marketing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but for this project uh, that I got coming out, is is called um, Out of the Lost and Found. I'm going to release a single, uh, see how it does, and um, then I'll drop it, see, you know, see if people like it. Do you think a lot about the marketing side of things? Because I, I think often as an artist, it might be discouraging to, to, it's a little discouraging to me too sometimes as a, as a studio owner how much music is out there yeah you know and then you're like man how can the stuff that i do be different or stand out part of that obviously is quality and talent like you know that's like the baseline yeah you gotta be talented. but there's a lot of talented people man like so my question to you is like man how do how do you break past just the crazy amount of music that's out there in order to get people you know, to give you the attention, to give your music the attention, you know, like, is that a constant struggle for you? Or like, man, is that, is that discouraging how much music is out there and then trying to break through all that? Or like, do you not even think about, I'm just gonna do my thing and just like not even care what other people do? Or what do you think about that? It's challenging. It is challenging because um, say you got, this is an example, say you got a Kodak Black dropping one week, Kanye West dropping the next. But it's, um, I was told, that um, like be like a horse with blinders on. Run your race. Mm. If you're looking at everybody else run, you're gonna lose. Like uh, you're not gonna be able to focus on your own race. So, you know, I just I just run my own race, and I also you have to be creative. That just goes. That's just what it is. Like uh, I just when I first started, I thought being an artist was just being creative, not working, not focus on business. Mm. But it's a business. Like, um, it's marketing. You have to be unique. So if you really just be genuinely, genuinely yourself, mm -hmm. uh, you're naturally going to stand out. Because a lot of people in the business, I notice that 
they're actually afraid to be themselves. But if you're yourself, no one can be you more than right. you. Right. Because there's probably a temptation to be like, well, if Travis Scott's doing this, let me try to do something like that. Or oh, like yeah. Drake's doing that. Let me try to. But I think, and that's what I, I hope people get when they start listening to your music is like, these songs, man, this is T Seals. Like, this is your personality. <laughs> yeah. This is you, you know? And I, I just think that that right there is like a create, like, that is a marker of success for your music is you i feel like and it's kind of it's taking a little bit of time i think to get there oh of course but now time. these songs like people are going to get your personality yeah they're going to get you you know and i think that's a that's a good that's a good marker of success if i asked you what is your definition of success as an artist you know i mean obviously you know you have the f the film thing and you're going to school and want to develop that but like what would be a what would be success in regards to you as an artist success would be me at least making a difference in uh, someone's life that would be success like uh whether it's like cheering them up through a hard time say uh maybe they're working a job they're not really into and they say and I'm performing one day, I get off stage, somebody say, hey, um, I jam you on the way to work. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm, that would be mm -hmm. dope. Of course, like, it would be cool, you know, see my music in the club or on the radio, people dancing to it. Yeah. That would be exciting. But, yeah, as long as I make a difference, like, I feel like I have a success. When I take my dog for a walk, sometimes I'll just throw on some music that I like. And there's a, a Jordan Lucas song, ADHD, that yeah. I've been listening to. I don't know why I like that song so much. But it does something to me, like emotionally. Like, I just get kind of hyped up, like, yeah. Yeah, you ready for the I'm just day? Like, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on, Maple. Uh, that's my dog's name. But yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. And it's, it's weird because it's like, I don't connect with that song in regards to what the topic is. Yeah. Just the vibe. It's just a vibe, you know? And I can, I can kind of look over a lot of lyrical stuff that I may not jive with myself, but just because it's a vibe, you know? And sometimes music t like that, it just. Like if they didn't put out that music, then it wouldn't it wouldn't affect me emotionally, like it does. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I kind of think at times too, it doesn't have to be so profound and deep, but it's just like somebody created something that is affecting some random dude in Spring, Texas, who's taking his dog for a walk. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that is really cool. That is so cool. And then you know, so many people. Yeah. It's, it's so, so, anyways, I I diverge, but um, no, that was that was great. You know, it's like he's. In this whole other region. Right. And he dropped his song and he touched you like on your every day. So crazy. That's and I dope. didn't even know who that guy was, maybe like until a year ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm an old guy now. So I'm <laughs> I'm old. So it's like <laughs> that, that dude's been around, man. man. <laughs> um Okay, so that was the success part of things, but what would you say is also what's your biggest struggle as an artist? You know, I think a lot of people that will hear this and you know, they, they're like, man, how do I make, you know, how do I make records? Like, how do I make songs? Like, what would you, what would you say is your biggest struggle? I would say the biggest struggle as an artist um, really is to get out your vision, like, uh, in a way that is not damaging to your pockets. Mm -hmm. Like, you can, like, mm -hmm. afford it. So it's like, you may have this vision, and it's like, all right, can I make it happen? Uh, try everything in your power to make it happen and uh, make adjustments on the way. And in a way, that that makes you more creative. Mm -hmm. So it's like um, really just the process. But it's like I love it. So it's like mm -hmm. it's a part of it. And like in a way, it makes the art better. So really just finding out how to make stuff happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, off, and I even think about this in regards to like mixing a song because i listen to so much music that i think sounds phenomenal well and then when i pull up a song it's like okay what's my vision for this because I, I feel like if i know where i want it to go then i can i can kind of get it there but if i have no end goal if i have no vision for what it could sound like then i'm just almost you know a lot of times like lost in the woods yeah. and then just make something that i think sounds good but it, i had no vision for it you know what i mean so yeah. um i think you're right about that Man, I am. I, I want to get into this performance, and uh, I want people to um, to hear it. This song. So, what song did you decide to perform today? 
I uh, decided to do a song called What It Is. Okay, give people the backstory of how that song came together for yourself. Man, um, of course, like I said, I just heard the beat. I just started writing. Next thing you know, I think it was like a, like a song, like talking about my ex, you know, stuff like that. It was just like, wow, it's not about anyone in particular. Yeah. But it's like, I like to make stories, so it's like, I thought as I kept going, it became an interesting story about what if I, like, I had this crazy ex, you know, it was like chasing me. So it's like, <laughs> while I'm working as a, as like a a bar a bartender at a fancy party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like it's like fun. It's an interesting story. It's probably just an amalgamation of a lot of stuff that I was going through at the time. Cool, so, man. Well, yeah. I'm excited to get into it. I want to end by going through a. Uh, a uh, thing I call 10 questions. 10 things, real quick. Real quick. Just fast, like, yeah, this is like just off the top of your dome. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> what's your favorite concert you've ever been to? Man. <laughs> I'm going to take a time. <laughs> All right. Uh, when I went to see J. Cole Ooh, for his 2014 good. Forest Hill Drive, I wanted tickets on the radio. Dang. <laughs> if I were reciting Biggie Smalls, yeah. Dang. I love that. Uh, favorite artist that you currently can't stop listening to? Favorite artist can't currently stop. Frank Ocean. I can't stop listening to Frank Ocean. Right. I don't know much of his stuff. I need to listen. I need to check that out. Like Frank Ocean and Future. That's a that's a weird combination, but I love it. What's the last song that made you stop and say, dang, that's good? It had to be like, uh, man. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody? <laughs> it was probably that. It was either that or yeah. Nights by Frank Ocean. Like, okay. Because I, I worked nights, so it was like, it was fitting. You do have a crazy work schedule. Yeah. Um, okay, what's the what's your favorite thing to do when you're not working? Favorite thing to do? I'm really into fashion, so I like uh, thrifting as well as uh, going, uh, finding new stuff. And every once in a while, like, distorting my own jeans and stuff. Yeah, so, okay. And uh, really into video games, so yeah, y'all can uh, catch that fade. You no know? doubt. Uh, what's your favorite drink of choice? You're not a coffee guy, are you? I'm not, but... Red Bull and <laughs> slushies from Sonic. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I love I love Sonic drinks, Sonic yeah. slushies. I got nerds in this. So if y'all heard crunching on the microphone, that was me, like, eating these nerds. So yeah, Sonic slushies before studio sessions. and uh, Are you a Spotify guy or Apple Music guy? I'm an Apple Music guy. I started as a Spotify guy, but... For some reason, I just find myself on Apple Music all the time. Uh, what's a song that you've made, even if people haven't heard it, what's a song that you've made that you're most proud of? Oh, man. Um, I'm really proud of a song called Pull Up. It's going to be the last song on the upcoming project. Uh, just because, like, we made half of it from scratch. Dude, I, and that was so cool to me. It's like we're in the middle of the song, and you're like, "Hey, I wanna, um, I wanna just change it." I'm like, "What?" And he's like, <laughs> "I'm like, do you have a second part of the song?" You're like, "No, like let's make something." <laughs> Dude, there's like two. You know how it just completely flips, and there's like two parts of that song, and it just feels so cool to me. So, just it, it just came together on the spot. Like yeah. that was dope. Um, okay, last question: best rapper of all time. Best rapper of all time. Man, um, there's so many good ones. There's so many good ones. Can I give you my top five? Okay, go top five. Top you five. can't commit to the top <laughs> one. So. All right, and this is based on my generation. I don't offend any old heads, whatever, but uh, Tupac, Andre 3000. Uh, this is not in any type of order. This is my top five favorite ones. It's not yeah, yeah, yeah. of all time. Oh, you can uh, go on it for sure, I know, but. Uh, Lil Wayne. Uh, I didn't expect that. Lil Wayne, he he's cold. Uh, Kanye West, and um, man, it's like a three way tie between Drake, Cole, and Kendrick. <laughs> it's a three way tie. Now we're at eight. <laughs> it's a three way tie. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, dude, thank you for coming by and stopping by on the podcast, talking about music. And I'm super excited about your journey, you know, and I'm super thankful that we got to work on so much stuff together. And, um, man, if people want to, like, reach out to you and, and connect with you, what's, where's the best place to do that? Oh, um, they can do it on my Instagram, 
Uh, it's uh, T underscore Seals 4. And uh, yeah. Cool, man. Well, I appreciate you, bro. Of course. Fancy, that's the drip. Baddies at the crib. Addy, then I start the whip. Not with that drama shit. She a good girl to handle biz. So I put my Mac down. What it is? Kick it, then I coast. Mind my biz. It's gonna come in background. What it is? See it, then I'm ghost. Mind my biz. Uh. Lace me to the game, now I'm lit like Jays. Might throw some tents on the whip today. I got the game in my hands like I am. She bend over, start popping all night. Oh yeah. There's no kid dudes, I got my aims. Cancel the bad booze, I mix the drains. You judging for my pencil, you ain't no saint. Took the road, not traveled. I'm switching rank, uh. T Valley crash your car. Say beg your pardon. Valley crash your car. Man, don't get me started. I went out to punch the guy and I seen a model. She cut ties with a guy, then she fled the party. So I put my neck down. What it is? Kick it, then I coast. Mind my biz. It's gonna come in background. What it is? See it, then I'm ghost. Mind my biz. Uh. Running through a bank like she hangs. Feeling days, but I leave her still amazed. Mama paved, can't believe this what she raised. Numb is safe, let my feelings in the safe. Running from my pain, won't you take me high? With her eyes, she seen the same, and we synchronized. This girl showed up to the place, and she angry fire. She wanna shake the vibe, I'm trying to shake the spot. Dodge that chick, we link, that's a case. Cuckoo. Demon Tom, better call past the maze. Cuckoo. Out this world, Bob brought you to my space. Cuckoo. Not a B day, but I see she brought them cakes. So I put my Mac down. Mac what Mac it is? Mac Kick it, then I coast. Mind my biz. Mac it's gonna come in background. Mac what Mac it is? Mac see it, then I'm ghost. Mind my biz. Daddy's at the spot, niggas trying to trick. Girls throwing ass like they used to strip. Ex acting ass, cause she over it. While well, I'm lost in my mind on this spacey trip. And now I'm lost on the dance floor. Lost chance, what I came for. Lost glance, seen a whole core. Lost trance, need a whole score. Yo, we are not the same, raising hell, bringing pain. Trouble switching lanes, but I chalk that to the game Your body has been calling my body We need to, need to leave with somebody So I put my neck down, what it is? Kick it, then I coast, mind my biz It's gonna come in background, what it is? See it, then I'm ghost, mind my biz uh. Had too much, now I'm over it Might go back on my own Need to take my ass back to my crib